Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my Sony KDL46 EX713. It's a 46 inch LED TV, 117 centimeters on the diagonal and a lot of you have been asking for me to bring you a video about this TV so I'm pleased to, to bring you my views on it. Now before I kick off with the actual review on the TV uh, I just want to show you what I've used to actually set this up. Now you saw this on my review of my 32 inch Sony TV. This is the Spears and Munsell High Definition Benchmark Blu-ray Edition. It's by Hand Forged Video. Uh, this is what you can see playing uh, on the screen at the moment. This is just some, some sort of test footage. Really fantastic disc. I'll show you some of the screens from this in a short while. It comes with a, an instruction pamphlet in there plus a set of blue um, sort of glasses that you hold in front of your eyes and this allows you to use some of the test patterns on the screen. So I'm going to show you that running but this review is really about the TV. Let me um, just set this footage plain. Now the actual TV uh, does swivel on its base. It's got like a, a base that allows you to actually turn the TV. It's quite hard to turn though but it will actually swivel on the base. Um, it's full 1080p edge LED backlit so it's not LEDs all the way over there's just LEDs along the edges uh, and that produces a nice even uniformity in the picture. Uh, there's a Bravia 3 engine and that really does result in a great picture. You can see here fantastic colour into the picture. There's also 100Hz refresh rate. Now standard TV refresh rate is 50Hz. You can get them to go up to 600Hz. 100Hz in my mind, absolutely fine. It's good for sports. I've uh, been very, very pleased with uh, watching things like football and fast action sports on here. Uh, no visible blurring really. Uh, it's also got a great viewing angle. I think it's quoted at around about 170 degree viewing angle. It will sit inside on even sort of quite sharp acute angles on the screen. You do still get a very very good picture. The sound's pretty good too. It's got two 10 watt speakers and normally LCD or LED TVs do let down uh, people on the sound but I've been more than happy with the actual sound reproduction on this screen. Now I'm going to show you the connectivity now so you get to know what sort of inputs the uh, Sony KDL46 EX713 actually has on the back and the side of the unit. So this is the left hand side of the TV and here we've got a card slot, one USB socket and then just below here we've got a couple of HDMI sockets as well and then just underneath the HDMI sockets we've got some composite video sockets. So this is the rear of the TV and again this is to the left hand side of the TV or as you're looking at the back it's on the right hand side and we've got an ethernet socket here because we can obviously connect this to the internet we've also got an antenna in that's for that digital free view tuner a couple of SCART sockets component video and audio then we've got here this is um, if I just come around this side this is a PC HDMI audio in socket. A couple more RCA type phono sockets here. We've got a 15 pin D sub. We've also got a couple more HDMI sockets there and also an optical digital audio out socket as well. Something I also wanted to point out, it's not a big deal, but to some people it will be, is the AC in socket. It's like a figure eight connector just in here. This is great, I much prefer these to hard wired cables because it means if you need a longer power cable you can just purchase one or make one up yourself rather than being stuck with the length of cable that the TV manufacturer decides. So as you can see the TV has absolutely plenty of inputs on the back, four HDMI sockets, you couldn't really want any more than that. Uh, before I show you this uh, setup disk that I used on the screen I just want to show you the remote now the remote that comes supplied is actually really good very very nice remote there's actually a, a power on off button on the back of the remote as well which is quite cool I haven't seen that before actually on a remote um, plenty of buttons on here 
for getting into things like the guide uh, internet TV because you can actually connect this via Ethernet uh, to your home network or with an optional Wi-Fi dongle you can connect it wirelessly so you can get access to internet TV um, all of the buttons very nicely laid out let me just give you a look at some of the menus now if I push, if I just bring this remote into view um, on this remote here, if I push this top left one this is what allows you to cycle round the inputs now on some sets you have to cycle round and go through each one on this you push the button and then you just select whichever input you want to go to well I'm going through my Onkyo amp so I would select Onkyo amp uh, if I select options this brings up the picture settings sound settings, favourites, uh, PAP menu, motion flow, present sensor, scene select, sleep timer, headphone volume and speakers let me just show you, I'm not going to go through every menu on this but let me show you the picture settings and for this particular input uh, we can uh, adjust the settings for each picture mode as well so we've got plenty of picture modes to choose from and we can adjust the backlight intensity, contrast, brightness, colour hue, colour temperature, sharpness which I've got set right down, noise reduction, MPEG noise reduction, motion flow, uh, fill mode is set to auto 1 and then we can also go into advanced settings which makes even more choices available for black corrector, advanced contrast enhancer, gamma, auto light limiter, clear white and live colour and last but not least white balance. Now you'll have noticed that while I've been going through those particular settings most of them I've got set to off. If I go back one stage in the menu you'll also notice noise reduction I've got set to off and my sharpness I've got almost set down to zero and I do that with most of the TVs that I set up. Now I did use uh, this Blu-ray that's playing now the Spears and Munsell Blu-ray to actually make some settings to the set. I just want to show you what that uh, Blu-ray disc actually gives you if I go to play this, start this disc playing again and then go to the menu on it now this really did help a lot you can go through the left hand menu on the blu-ray uh, let me just go across to it and you can do setup and evaluation, you can do deinterlacing uh, you can use that demonstration material which is what you saw playing back a minute ago uh, or you can go to setup, help and about well the one that I sort of ran through, and this is the step-by-step -step guide, are all of these ones here. You can see me highlighting them in the right-hand panel. Now, you don't have to go through every single one of them. In my setup I did, but you can select them individually. But let's just, for example, look at the Pluge Low setting. And here, you would adjust the uh, brightness or contrast. And reading through, if I push... Uh, up on my remote it tells you what the screen should like so correct setting at the top and an incorrect setting at the bottom and then if I push down it gives me the test screen and I make adjustments using my TV remote so I'm happy with the picture and then you can skip through the disc and go on to the various setting screens I'm just going to run through some of them now and on each screen that you run through if you push up on your remote it gives you instructions so you don't really have to use the instructions they include in the box and this is one of the ones where you use that blue lens that I showed you uh, and you have to get it so it looks like the top right hand panel there on this main screen let me just see if I can show you that through the blue glasses I was probably not going to work but if I hold those blue glasses in front of the camcorder you're trying to achieve equal brightness between the colour bars and the one down the bottom there so it gives you an idea of the sort of screens that this disc actually gives you I'm going to run through just a couple more it's very thorough actually in the way you're going to use it to set up your TV here we've got some geometry lines which we use for sharpness so this is for adjusting the sharpness of your set and here we've got a confirmation that some of your settings are correct and another one, uh, this one here, if I push up, this is for image cropping so you can see if your TV is actually cropping your image and if it's correctly centred. This one here is used for chroma alignment 
absolutely fantastic disc. And this one here is just a confirmation that your TV is set up correctly. If you look here, correct is all visible, incorrect is none visible. And, and this is um, something that shows up uh, sort of your contrast and brightness uh, accuracy on the TV. And as you can see, if I push down again, on this particular TV, it's not doing a great job of rendering different grayscales. That's one of the letdowns with this particular set. And the actual test material goes on. There is absolutely stacks of test screens that you go through to really test how good your TV set is. An invaluable disc, actually. Uh, the TV itself uh, is a big, big investment but spending another sort of 20 to 30 pounds on that, that Spears and Munsell disc is well worth it. Let's go back up to that top menu on the disc and we go down to here and into demonstration material. So just before I, I stop talking about the disc I'll give you one last look at the case. This is the Spears and Munsell High Definition Benchmark Blu-ray Edition, well worth purchasing if you're investing in a uh, LCD or an LED TV. Um, just going on to what I don't like about the TV, let me give you a look at this. The stand on it, very wobbly. So, although it's perfectly alright, it's not going to tip over, uh, the actual stand is a big letdown. They could have done a much better job with how it's mounted on that stand. One feature that I do like is it's got a presence sensor in it. Now you set a preset time, maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and if everyone leaves the room, so there's nobody in the room, it actually puts the TV into standby. I like that a lot. I also like the fact that I can hook it up to my network for internet TV. It's got things like YouTube on there, plus a lot of other streams that you can select as well. I didn't buy the wireless dongle, didn't see it necessary because I can hook it up with a wire. The picture quality, absolutely fantastic. I mean, very, very happy with the picture quality. Pricing, I got a stunning deal on this. I'm in the UK. Uh, I shopped around, I got uh, one of the online retailers to do me a price match. Uh, I don't mind telling you who it was, it was John Lewis did a price match for me. £739 delivered with a five-year guarantee. So £739 in the UK with a five-year guarantee. I can't guarantee you're going to get that price. Their list price on the John Lewis website is £999. Now this isn't a review product, I purchased this myself. Uh, but very, very good. Good delivery time, good service from them as well. If you're in the US, it's going to cost you round about $1,900. Um, so not sure if that represents a good value buy in the US. Let me know in the comments what you think about the pricing. Uh, for me, I'm really happy that I purchased this TV. Absolutely fantastic for watching films, for playing games. Love the menu system. As I say, the only letdown is probably that wobbly stand. Uh, and possibly, also just one thing to mention, these side inputs on the HDMIs. I wish they put one of the uh, extra HDMIs on the back rather than on the side. But that said, very, very happy with it. This was my review of the Sony KDL 46 EX713. Thank you very much for watching. Please come back soon and check out more video reviews on the Geek and Noise channel. This video review is sponsored by Crucial, the memory experts. They provide reliable PC, notebook and Mac memory to boost your system performance and improve your general workflow.